Family, welcome back to the channel. We have another video here by Shattered Paradise. We watched them for the first time a couple days ago, and I seen that a lot of you guys were commenting that you already had come across this channel before and used to watch their videos. Their videos are very eye-opening in the cinema and the and just the setting that they set within the videos are just amazing. So we're about to watch another one right here. It says, "Open your eyes. You have always been the target." Let's get straight into this video. Make sure you do smash the like button, subscribe if you are new, and turn on post notifications if you haven't already. These videos be getting me in the zone, bro. I don't usually put both the headphones on, but you know what we gotta do. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? And the people not be afraid. Dreams. Not be afraid. American dreams. Awake, thou that sleepest. Wake up. Open your eyes. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Are we dreaming? Oh, I can hear. I can hear you. I can hear. Mm, I can hear. Pretend. I hear when you. It's spiritual. Shalom, family. Welcome to Shattered Paradise. They cannot intrude here. Somebody got to tell the truth. Ex expose them. And facts, I want to tell you. Seen and unseen. Exoteric and esoteric. The discerning eye. The discerning eye. In the Western world, the Gregorian month of June has been designated to represent pride. This is a time when all manner of hedonistic debauchery is celebrated and paraded throughout the streets of America and Europe. Egged on, financed and sponsored by multinational corporations and globalist think tanks like the UN, the WHO, and the World Economic Forum. They're all working in unison to force feed the public a steady stream of rainbow colored proper pronoun pronouncing propaganda. And now America and Europe are trying to force these depraved customs on their former colonies in Africa, South America, and Asia using neo-colonialism and debt extortion. But these perverted, arrogant, ruling class elites may have overplayed their hand because there's been a growing resistance to their agenda ever since enough people started to wake up and see who was being targeted in the schools and libraries and what spiritual forces were being promoted to the most impressionable and vulnerable among us. This looks like kindergarten. California State Senate today discussing an amendment to a bill that would make parents guilty of child abuse if they don't affirm their child's gender identity. Critics say it would lead to children being taken away from a parent in a custody dispute. In recent months, in the midst of a storm of engineered global crisis, the externalization of the hierarchy and revelation of the satanic method have been on full display with fashion brand Balenciaga leading the charge then CBS came out and revealed who they worship during the Sam Smith Kim Petra Grammy performance and now Target let's get, let's get, let's is showing their true satanic colors Target acquired. You Should See Me in a Crown is about a girl named Liz Lighty who's always felt like an outsider in her small, rich, prom-obsessed Midwestern hometown. So her plans are simple. She's gonna get a scholarship to her dream school, become a doctor, and never look back. 
But what she doesn't expect is to meet Mac, the funny new girl in school who enters the race, and she certainly doesn't expect to fall for her. Easy target. Oh, wow, Target, that was one a of the nation's largest retailers, is pulling some products that celebrate Pride Month off store shelves. Citing threats to employees, the company says, given these volatile circumstances, we are making adjustments to our plans, including removing items that have been at the center of the most significant confrontational behavior. Target also reportedly reviewing its adult collection of tuck-friendly swimsuits that allows trans people who have not had gender-affirming operations to conceal their private parts. The retailer removing LGBTQ brand App Prowlin from their stores and website, whose products featured satanic themes. And designs from a company wow. that make satanic-themed LGBTQ plus merchandise. One of the brand's merchandise reading, Satanism respects pronouns. This comes as the retail giant is is ramping up their pride related merchandise. So Target has hired Eric, a self-proclaimed gay trans man, to design some of its clothing for Pride Month. After a quick look through Eric's Instagram, we learned something pretty interesting. He has an obsession with Satanism. He's designed a Satan respects pronouns t-shirt, gay as hell stickers, and stained glass windows with the words trans bodies are holy. Eric also uses some pretty violent imagery. But the, the craziest part, though, is that gay. is that people could really look at this T-shirt and not see the Satanism. Well, it's the saying right there. But at least like the goat, like that's the bathman right on the right on the T-shirt. Like they'd be putting it right there. It's just a matter of having that knowledge and discernment of what is what Satanism. With Satanism, he's designed a Satan respects pronouns T-shirt, gay as hell stickers, and stained glass windows with the words "trans bodies are holy." Eric also uses some pretty violent imagery. He has a burn down the system lighter, a we bash back mace, and time's up for the transphobes skull pins. And in March, he said that in order to, quote, keep the transphobes at bay, we must eradicate them. Eric Carnell's collection also includes this pin that reads, homophobe headrests. His designs are displayed over a backdrop of crystals and Ouija board pointers, all in the pastel colors of the trans flag. This pin says, trans witches for abortion. Hey, do you guys support the satanic pride propaganda? I, I yeah, both. You support it? Satan you say, and pride. You support Satan? Mm hmm What's God gonna think of that? I don't believe in God. Wow. Don't, so you Did think- Did you need help with something? You support the propaganda that's targeting the kids? nothing targeting kids all it's all over kids tv shows it's all over they're targeting kids, the kids. Can choose to wear whatever they want do you support the sexualization of kids through pride propaganda by Sorry, corporate is there something that we can help you with i'm just asking people questions hey bro if i was a f i'm gonna just keep it a buck and i appreciate my dad for this even though it's never really happened but like if i wanted to put on my mom's high he high heels my dad would be like, no, don't put that on. You don't wear that. You're a boy. You get what I'm saying? And it's like, bro, just the contradiction in what she's saying. She says she believes and supports Satan, but doesn't believe in God. Like, if you're going to believe that, that is, uh, that's your God at this point. You feel what I'm saying? If you believe and support it. What about you, sir? Do you, do you I'm support not this? Any questions? But if you're here to cause any disturbance in the store, I'm just asking questions. Yes, do you work, do you work for the target? Disrupting. Do you work yes, for target? I do actually. Where's your name tag? I I am the undercover loss prevention. Oh, okay. So, I'm just asking questions. So, do you support the satanic propaganda? I'm not like answering your questions. What you need to do is you either need to leave the store. God will judge you guys. Okay. I mean, I can't. You won't if I don't believe in it. Hey, ma'am, do you support this? If, yes. like, if her logic is if you don't believe in God and he exists, she he won't judge her? What? Just say. You support oh, pride propaganda? Stop, Whoa, dude, I'm buying this. I need you to, you're, Whoa, let you go, You just said you're man. not buying it. I'm going to buy it and burn it. Okay, that's your choice. You can totally do that. Well, what I said is you need to leave. You can't ask anybody any more questions. You can't disrupt Freedom any of speech. Call the police. Do you want me to call? Yeah, call them. Okay. Trespass me. I don't care, dude. Okay. Clearly. You think I care if you trespass? I've done this no, a thousand we times. Never, we never said that. You're, you guys are satanic. True. True. They'd be open about In it. reality, 
no one should be surprised. This company has been broadcasting their allegiance to a particular androgynous entity for years. You see, there is an overt exoteric meaning to this logo made for public consumption. Then there is a covert esoteric occult meaning to this same symbol made for the eye of the initiate, the eye of the illuminist. And there are also many of the Most High's watchmen who are able to decipher these mystery symbols and sigils because we have been given eyes to see, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. But for your average advertisement-driven consumer, unable to wake from the sleep paralysis of the American dream, the Target logo is just that, a Target. Well, I assure you, there's a much deeper and much more Luciferian meaning behind the iconic brand's red dot encased in a circle. If you take a close look at the mascot the retail giant has chosen to represent itself with, the layers of deception begin to disappear. A white dog with two concentric circles around his left eye. One-eye symbolism, or the evil eye, is most often associated with the veneration and invocation of the ancient Egyptian god, Horus. The Eye of Horus. Highlighting a dog's left eye is a blatant astrological reference to the celestial body the Egyptians used to represent the Eye of Horus, the dog star Sirius. the star Sirius. Uh, the dog star. The dog star, because the dog star was everything to the ancient Egyptians. Wow. Sirius is said to have been the most important star in the ancient world. It was considered the brightest star in the heavens, many times brighter than the sun. The Great Pyramid was built to synchronize with Sirius so that the light of the star would shine into the queen's chamber to cast a beam upon an initiate during a ritual. It seems strange then that Sirius should be related to the founding of America. According to Masonic author David Ovison, the Declaration of Independence was signed when the sun was in alignment with Sirius in July of 1776. Interesting thing about all Freemasonry is that symbolism is ultimately very important. They don't put a lodge in the East because it's a nice, very important. He's an author and member of Code Masonry. They don't put a lodge in the East because it's a nice place and it looks good. They put it in lodge in the East. The masters have put it in the East so because it's the rising sun. It's the rising sun. You're catching the energies of the light. As Dr. Hieronymus revealed earlier, the real light shining in the east for the Egyptians was not merely the sun, but the light of the dog star, Sirius, which some believe holds a more sinister implication. This, this dog star also has relations Excellent. to the idea of modern day ceremonial magic and modern day masonry. This was especially true for 20th century occultist and Freemason, Aleister Crowley, who openly practiced ceremonial magic and was a member of a secret order called the Order of the Silver Star. The real quick, I just want to mention this. If there's anyone that doesn't really necessarily believe in masonry, I mean, it's a very real thing. Like you, a lot of people are, are masons. But not only that, you can also see the celebrities. A lot of celebrities make the symbols of masonry, especially when it comes to the circle, the 666. You have them going like that for the Illuminati. You have just so many different things, even hand gestures that are being made. And then you also have the mason, the, the uh, the uh, co-Mason member talking about how symbolism is one of the biggest things that they play on. Silver Star was a reference to Sirius. Masons teach that at the center of every Masonic Lodge, there's a five-pointed star right underneath the altar upon which the candidate is obligated. 
But the thing is, what they don't tell you is that five-pointed star represents Sirius, which is regarded as a satanic symbol. Masonic philosopher Albert Pike wrote that Sirius still glitters in our lodges as the blazing star. The blazing star is an ancient uh. Gnostic term for Sirius, and as shown here, is symbolized in Freemasonry by the five-pointed star or pentagram. Because Sirius is said to arise in the east, it also became known as the Eastern Star. But Sirius oh. was also associated with the Egyptian goddess Isis. And here, as we connect the dots... And I think, I think uh, female masons are called Eastern Stars. A more complete okay. picture begins to emerge. For the Egyptians, the rising of Sirius in the east preceded the annual flooding of the Nile River which for them was a magical event. It was also the time that the goddess Isis would appear and give birth to Horus, the divine child of the Egyptian trinity. The all-seeing eye is also called the Eye of Horus, and in Freemasonry, Horus symbolizes the Masonic concept of a Christ. Throughout all history, it has been said that the capstone to the Great Pyramid of Egypt has been missing, which is why the all-seeing eye of Horus floats in its place above the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. According to occult philosophers, the light which illuminates the eye comes not from the sun, but from the dog star Sirius. Hmm. Subsequently, when looking for a deeper understanding of the attributes and personification of Horus, the entity synonymous with the dog star, one must look to his Greek equivalent, Dionysus, the Greek god of theater and masquerade. He was a frightening and violent god with a variety of attributes that were both terrifying and wonderful, always the twin image of the twice born. He was the bringer of madness, but he was also a bull god, a god of fertility, to do with sensuality and sexuality. He was anarchic and revolutionary. He was uh, the god of masquerade, which means seeing things literally other than they are. But importantly for our history, he was the god of possession. Dionysus was able to reveal himself directly to the individual. His worshippers were possessed by him, now we begin to see why Dionysus, this god of masquerade and of possession, became the god of the theatre. Because in the early theatre, the actor believed himself to be possessed by the part he was playing. Mm. I, I, was, I remember sometime, we do 10 episodes for my show, and in this last season, um, I was hitting a block, right? I, I was like, oh, I'm not doing it right, right? So I went in the corner and then I was looking at the wall and I was like, come on, devil, come on, devil, right? Get, come to me, like, come to me. Because I had to do something like crazy, right? Had nightmares for a month. So it does come- to it or after? After. after? Like I had nightmares every day. Like I just felt, I felt that energy. Snowfall's Damson Idris has relinquished his will and surrendered his soul to the god of theater. In this photo, he's broadcasting his spiritual allegiance, proudly displaying the Eye of Horus, the hallmark of the Dionysian cult. Damson Idris was cast in Snowfall to magnify and glorify the spirits of the 1980s crack epidemic, which ravaged the Israelite community and destroyed many Israelite families. Ever since Hollywood's first hit blockbuster movie, The Birth of a Nation, their mission to destroy the image of the Israelites in the eyes of the world and in our own eyes has been consistent. Though they now employ more sophisticated deception, they have not deviated from their original goal or target.
Here's Dionysus on this lovely sculptural relief. Um, he's carrying an amphora of wine and he's holding a wine cup in his hand. But what really strikes you is how his pose mirrors almost exactly that of the woman next to him. And overall, he's pretty effeminate. Uh, he's got a smooth chin without a beard. He's got these lovely cascading curly locks. And it even looks as though he's got breasts. Time and time again, Dionysus is described and portrayed as being androgynous. But more than that, He's also talked about as being transgender. Their mission to destroy the image of the Israelites in the eyes of the world and in our own eyes has been consistent. <clears throat> it's not hard to see that Hollywood venerates the eye of Horus are Dionysus. Target. 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 Target has most definitely used Hollywood star power to catch the eye of the consumer and sell not only a wide array of merchandise, but sell them on the spiritual values of the Patreon god of their brand, Dionysus. The pop star Taylor Swift is a prime example of how the retail chain uses celebrities to spiritually condition the public to accept their inverted doctrine. In this scene, in Taylor Swift's recently released music video, Karma, we see the infernal nature of the Dionysian cult. In the form of Taylor adorned in full theatrical Greek garb from the long robe to the horned mask, concealing the true identity and intention of the high priestess. Now we begin to see why Dionysus, this god of masquerade and of possession, became the god of the theatre. Because in the early theatre, the actor believed himself to be possessed by the part he was playing. From our scant knowledge, we know the actor was masked and wore a long robe. This song also features Ice Spice, a so-called Afro-Latino, symbolically holding a pink pearl sporting her signature red afro, channeling the Greek fertility goddess Aphrodite, and the clam oyster symbolism represents an aphrodisiac. So you see the Daughters of Zion are prime targets for this sort of Greek femme fatale witchcraft. Like Snowfall's Damson in Idris, Ice Spice has allowed herself to become a conduit to a hostile Greek demon, hellbent was spiritually sabotaging the Israelites in this great awakening. And again, her reflection in the water showcases their as above, so below spellcasting, as well as their plan to spiritually ensnare the daughters of Zion to something in the water. We further expose this agenda in our upcoming full-length presentation the Marine Kingdom 3. Ascending to the pinnacle of the Illuminati Pyramid using highly astrological Gnostic symbolism, we see Taylor Swift and Ice Spice wielding two glowing lassos which they use to rope the moon and Saturn with. Knowing the Eastern Star represents the Aussian Eye and capstone of the Grand Pyramid, the Taylor Swift video uses young women's fascination with relationships and zodiac signs to initiate them into deeper Luciferian astral theology. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Mm. 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 Thus saith the Lord, 
Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, mm. and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Mm. Dionysus has also manifested as the Phantom of the Opera. Do you guys hear Coach Stone microphone? Oh. Like that? Is that? Watch it! I'm not touching it. You have no idea. Did you hear that? Did you hear piano? Are, are they able to hear that? No. I, I didn't play that. So that means that... Yeah, it totally seems haunted. It all went down night three of Tay's Airs tour in Foxborough, Massachusetts. At one point, her piano started playing on its own. In her most recent concert, Taylor Swift is performing witchcraft. And I know this is going to raise some controversy in the comments, but this just doesn't look right to me. We are For Swifties, seeing Taylor Swift live is a dream come true. But for some of these diehard fans, they have no memory of their concert experience. It's being called Taylor Amnesia. You heard that right. Some fans can't remember the concert they attended just moments earlier. That's what happened to 32-year-old Nicole Booz, who saw Taylor earlier this month in Philadelphia. You spent almost a thousand dollars on a ticket right and you can't yeah. remember anything it felt like so surreal afterwards as we were leaving i was like did she play this song i don't remember this song i don't remember her doing that yeah they'd be having you on just some different type of spiritual frequencies in that joint oh no nah. after many years at the turn of the century the vision of adam weishaupt's illuminati founded in 1776, eventually begin to take shape. George Draper Dayton founded Dayton's department store at the turn of the century in 1902 in Minneapolis, which would eventually become the iconic retail store, Target. He also presided over the Bank of Worthington and founded the Minnesota Loan and Investment Company. The Dayton family dynasty grew in power and influence, eventually marrying into the infamous Rockefeller family, the first family of the Anglo-American arm of the Illuminati. At a 1991 closed-door meeting of fellow internationalists, billionaire and former CFR chairman David Rockefeller praised his media allies but his confidence that his words would not leave the room was later broken. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march toward a world government. The granddaughter of oil baron John D. Rockefeller wed the trust fund baby and Yale skull and bonesman Mark Dayton, combining the two New World Order houses into one influential extended family, further consolidating their political, financial, and social power in the West. In the early 1900s, the Rockefellers gathered with representatives and emissaries from the 13 ruling bloodlines descending upon Cold Springs Harbor 
This unholy cabal included members of Skull and Bones, the Bohemian Grove, and Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Meeting with initiates from various fraternal orders, occult brotherhoods, and secret societies to finance the modern eugenics movement and strategically implement population control. The Rockefellers kept detailed records of bloodlines they deemed unworthy to exist. Many of these records were kept at Cold Springs Harbor. In many cases, this crafty council knows more about the patrilineal heritage of the targeted population than the people themselves who have been marked for extermination. Impoverished, impover impoverished Israelite children with no parents in sight, being forced to play instruments and dance for John D. Rockefeller and his clan of co-conspirators. -consp for there, they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it even to the foundation thereof. The eugenics Rockefeller connection is a well documented historical fact, though after World War II, many eugenics organizations rebranded themselves as health, humanitarian, and environmental conservationist institutions. It is in this tradition which Mark Dayton who married John D. Rockefeller's granddaughter, became the Democratic governor of Minnesota. His wife, Alita Rockefeller, actively financed left-wing progressive causes while he was the Democratic governor. Minnesota Governor Mark mm. Dayton has signed a bill that legalizes gay marriage, making the state the 12th to do so. Last year there were concerns that marriage equality would be banned here forever. Now, my signature will make it legal in two and a half months. My name is Abigail Martinez. It has been three years and 164 days since I lost my daughter, Yaley. I miss her every single day. Let me tell you how she died. My daughter was murdered by a gender ideology. CPS took my daughter when she was 16 years old. It was helped by her public school counselor and LGBTQ group rights and another trans identified girl. My daughter was taken from her loving home because the state of California claimed I was abusive uh, for not affirming her trans identity. I lost my daughter over a name and a pronoun. Even after, after I, prom I promised to call her a male name, it wasn't enough. My daughter was not a boy trapped in a girl's body. She had mental health issues. Against my consent, my daughter was given testosterone instead of wow. therapy. Wow. The LGBTQ group use her to pro to raise money for for them look at the poor reject trans boy they said wow why are there so many transgender in foster care because this they take them from their families tell them to run then steal them parents are given one option to treat their distressed child, affirm, drug, and remove their healthy body part or else lose your child. The abuse claim against me was finally dropped, but it was too late. 
the damage was done. My then, my, by then, my daughter was in a horrible mental and physical pain. My daughter knelt down in front of a train. She was murdered by gender ideology. I beg you, stop pushing gender ideology. I don't want any parent to feel what I feel every day. Affirmation is not good for the health, safety, and welfare of a ch any child. These radical political ideologies were infused in the corporate culture of Target and have become a part of the company's identity. The Luciferian spellcasters have been manipulating the American psyche. They have downloaded a secret cache of programming deep in the recesses of the people's subconscious mind. And now the world's psyche is filled with an irrational hatred for the true Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A hatred for his laws, his son, and his chosen people. But the Most High's Ruach is being poured out in these last days, so we know we have the victory. And it is just a matter of time before the Kingdom of Heaven is manifest on Earth as it is in the Shamayim. In closing, we must pray that we be granted the spiritual discernment and Holy Spirit inspired vigilance so we will be able to see things as they truly are and not just as they appear to be. Amen. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. and chains too dungeons and dragons the coronation wow where do we start preliminary reports say he suffered a heart attack it is so sudden there's a large segment of society that doesn't ask questions it was so sudden. Found unresponsive in his wife's home Friday night. They've swallowed the propaganda 
hook, line, and sinker. So sudden. Blood clots traveling to the brain, cutting off oxygen. And there are no signs of foul play. Their cognitive dissidence so sudden. and Stockholm Syndrome have them tightly chained to the official narrative, regurgitating talking points from the trusted expert authorities like subservient, submissive pets. 100% effective. Highly effective. Is both safe and highly effective. These videos are just great, for real, bro. The amount of things that it shows and it correlates, it just makes so much sense, like, what's being put in front of our face at this point. And we're also able to see, like, just the play and propaganda, how they're really trying to take over our mind just to do the specific narrative that will only benefit them so we're able to just be controlled in bots. They don't want us to think for ourselves. The only way you can get to a point of critical thinking is literally thinking for yourself and questioning everything that's told to you. Just quite, you know what I'm saying? Just question, like, yo, where and why? For real? Where from? How do you know? You know what I'm saying? Like, just question things. Think for yourself and just follow your conscience, man. But look it. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Especially if you watch this point of video, make sure you do share the video to one of your friends, family members, whoever it is. More people need to see this. More people's eyes need to be open on what's really going on. And then also just God and salvation. Understand that there's really two there's really two sides to this world. And the reason why so much bad is happening is because there's people literally working for bad to happen. It's not just happening just out of poof and air. No, like so much is happening because people are literally doing rituals, spiritual things, connecting with different types of gods for for things to happen. You get what I'm saying? But we understand that there's only one most high God revealed through Jesus Christ. And that's who we're protected by. We are children of God. And that's what it is. You feel what I'm saying? So we are going to have the gift of eternal life. Free gift. I love it, man. I really do love it. Make sure you do smash the like button. Subscribe. Turn on post notifications. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one the same way you're going to catch me in the next one. Peace. Love you.